Wow, this is the uh, smallest Samsung TV that I've ever had. Once again, it was a really dusty telly, but as you can see, plugged it in and it all works. And this one has lots of connectors in the back. Right the back there. That's a model number. Nice pattern on the back, and again it says the model number there. Unfortunately, I didn't get a control with it, but this one works it, so I can use one of them. So let's see what happens when it turns on. Let's nice say. Oh wow. Looks a little smaller than the, the last one we saw, but I think it's so the one, and it all just looks really tidy, really neat. Yeah. I'm loving the, the post office turn box. Out the the litter box of a house. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, you yeah. look across, yeah. well, the first aid group it also comes oh, sorry, with a proper so guide. Wow. And like many of these sort of properties, we go in around the back door. Yeah. Go in. This detached cottage is thought to have been built in the early 19th century and has been recently renovated throughout. Its peaceful rural location and impressive views seem to have been a hit so far, but I think the inside will really test how badly they want to live in a country cottage, because it does price. Now, with quaint cottages, the quaint kitchens, exactly. But, just next door, yeah, just come through there, the dining area. Yeah. It's normally an these are really it's bad viewing angles, but this one uh, yeah, seems really, quite really a good like viewing it. angle. So normally you have to be right in the it's middle really to see the picture. I, mean, the kitchen, but I can this see this one. from yeah, any I side. For me, I can then go in small. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. But the one advantage of a galley kitchen, particularly where you've got this kind of corner space, is if you're down there, at least that's your area of the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Clearly, the edge of the no So the whole kind of fighting yeah. for space maybe won't happen with, with the layout. So yeah, look, look around a little bit more and, and see what there is to see. Well, you said it. <laughs> Let's do it. Come with me, Chips. Nice. No marks on this one or nothing. Perfect. Oh dear, oh my. Just, uh, I need a better Why? aerial. A little tiny aerial works, no problem. Weird how a little baby aerial goes better than a big aerial. Our personal aerial. circumstances rather than a wider policy debate. I think like all politics, it's a bit of both, isn't it? Um, personalities can rub each other up the wrong way, or groups oh disagree with other groups within main parties. It's been true of Labour in office, and it's now true of Conservatives in office. Wow. But there are also policy it's issues at stake here. There is a feeling by too many Conservative okay. members and some Conservative members of Parliament, nice. including the three who just expressed their views very forcefully by their actions. That the, the government needs to be a bit more oh, conservative. Not as good sound as that, that one, which I've got the other day. So I've got uh, that great big Sony the other day. Still got that one, and I've got this one. Is this the end of Boris Johnson's day. career in frontline politics? And or do you this still one think he has works been? excellent as a monitor as well. Oh, I might as well keep this one use as a monitor because you can see this is how good it is as a monitor but of course Boris is going to remain an influence over our politics which is why the Prime Minister has to listen carefully to what Boris has been saying and think about what Boris's followers believe, because there are a lot of Boris followers out there. Some of them are not winning, according to the opinion polls, the vote conservative at the moment. I'd like to help win them back. And Very so good. Well, I won't open it All right, so we'll so leave it there, but thank you very much the, for your time today, so John Edward, yeah, yeah, you know, a former conservative minister. Not too 
Uh, oh, I want it. By the director of Institute for Government, Dr. Hannah White, to uh, talk a little more about this. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. From your perspective, what does it mean that Boris Johnson has stepped aside in this manner? Well, I think that he's looked at what is likely to happen now that the Privileges Committee has drawn its conclusions and decided really to take the easy way out. He knows on it. that uh, if the Privileges Committee is making, that. as we assume, we haven't seen the report, but he has a recommendation that he should be suspended for more than 10 days, 10 sitting days, because nice. he was nice. not just inadvertent, but in some way uh, either 